Welcome to another episode of The Hair Kitchen, and I'm your host, G. Marie. In today's episode, we'll be talking to a published author who happens to be one of my loyal clients. I'm so excited to have her here. Stay tuned. So a little bit about the author. She is currently living in Maryland. She spent 35 years in corporate America and now writes full time. She cherishes her family, exploring the meaning of life, chocolate, rainy days, dancing, salsa, and meditation. She is most proud of raising her two sons as a single mother to be very successful young men. And while she continued her education and got her master's degree in social work and being a grandmother of two wonderful grandsons that she says keeps her grounded. Her first debut novel was Red September and it was released in 2015. It's a love story with twists and turns of the heart where she takes the reader on a roller coaster ride of emotions that will make you laugh, cry, and want more. Her second novel, Soulfully Yours, debuted in July of 2020. This story depicts three friends who met in college and due to their busy work schedules, their reality of dating has been replaced by joining a popular dating website named Soulfully Yours. As the story unfolds, these women get caught up in a web of secrets and lies that envelops their world. I'm super excited that the author has decided to do her first debut interview here on The Hair Kitchen. And without further ado, Marita Berry. And thank you so much for having me. Yes. So, Miss Barry, soulfully yours. Um, I've re I've really enjoyed. The, I mean, I can't even say how much I enjoyed the book. But I wanted to know where did you get the title from? And I noticed the computer screen. I noticed the email, and it's about online dating. So, how did you come up with soulfully yours as a title? Well, actually, it was a a title my father used to um, write letters to me. He was separated from my mother at the time, mm -hmm. and he used to write letters to me. And instead of signing it, yours truly or love dad, he used to put soulfully yours. Wow. And so when I was doing the, the book for about internet dating, I thought what a perfect title it would be to say this is an internet dating called soulfully yours. Wow, that's amazing. I love that because how many of us can say, that's a love story in itself with you and your dad. How many of us can say that our dad wrote us letters and then signed it so for the yours. yours. So mm -hmm. that just takes it even deeper as a connection. So yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, I love that. Um, and your second book, I love the title of this one too. I even love the cover. Mm -hmm. And it's called Red September. Mm -hmm. Tell me how you came up with the title for that one. So similarly, <laughs> mm -hmm. Red September is also a love story based on a uh, couple that spanned 30 years. And I didn't have a name for it until one day I'm sitting at the computer and so the title came with Red September, so I wrote it down. Come to find out later on, it was red is my mother's favorite color and September was the month that she passed. So this book was based on her life story as well. Wow, so two mm -hmm. love stories in a sense. Yeah. One about internet dating, but the mm -hmm. title comes from a relationship with you and your dad. Mm -hmm. And then here you have Red September that you said is a love story, right? Yes. And yeah, it's funny. your mother's favorite color and yes. the month she passed. So mm -hmm. that's love all the way around yeah. in itself. Yeah. So I know how much I enjoyed this one. I can't wait to get into Red September. So as you can see, Marita Berry has written two novels, and one is Soulfully Yours, and the other one is Red September, but today we will be discussing Soulfully Yours. So, Ms. Berry, there are three main characters in the book. How did you come up with them as your characters for the online dating in Soulfully Yours? So, actually, these three women were based on three actual friends who went to college in uh, Atlanta, uh, Spelman College in Atlanta, Georgia. And I knew, 
know of these women. Mm -hmm. So I listen to the stories from my sister friends and from other family members, and that's how I base my characters, loosely based mm -hmm. on my characters, <laughs> on friends and, and uh, family members. So these were stories that they shared with you about the trials and tribulations of online dating? Yes. Which, as you know, we online dating is the current way people meet. It's not like you could walk in the grocery store and be like, hey, how you doing, what's your number? That kind of goes away as you get older. You got a little more to lose. So you meeting strangers can be a little bit, ah, how do I do this? Where online dating kind of gives you a, I don't want to say a false sense, but a false sense of getting to know the person before you actually have to meet to interact. So um, tell me a little bit about that. Well, I, write, I wanted to write about online dating because of the fact that being single nowadays, you know, it's very lonely for a lot of women, mm -hmm. unless you want to go to a bar or to a club or to an event. Mm -hmm. But then you got to compete with other women, mm -hmm. you know, for, for your, um, to other men, whatever. Mm -hmm. So what I did was I went on online dating so that I knew once you started a profile mm -hmm. into the website and you can meet people right away, basically. Mm -hmm. You can meet tons of people <laughs> right. right away. As long as you match, you know, right, match right. up with them. Sisters' marriage is taking it from there, mm -hmm. you know. Okay, so can you share any specific challenges or surprises that you encountered while writing about the intricacies of online dating in your narrative? Well, actually, before writing the book, I did my own research. Okay. And I joined an online dating service so I can get to see what the nuances of before I started writing the book. Okay. And I set up my profile and I had a few matches and I met this one gentleman and we went out on a date and met at a restaurant and he was a uh, probation officer. Okay. So we went out to this restaurant and he happened to tell me that he has a gun on him because you know probation officers carry right. guns. Right. So, so needless to say I was scared oh. the whole night long. Oh, man. You know, very uncomfortable <laughs> right. the whole night long. So I couldn't wait till the, the night ended. Oh, wow. So once it ended, I took a cab home, and that was my last time. First and last. Last time. No more online dating? No. Okay, I'm so I just want to back up a little bit. Was he nice? Yeah, he was a nice guy and everything, you know. <laughs> well, pleasant and everything. Uh -huh. Well built and everything, mm -hmm. stuff like that. But once he mentioned he had to carry his gun, and... Wow. He's sitting there, and I'm feeling petrified. I don't know what could happen, you know, oh, during the wow. course of the night. I can imagine. But that could be a little unnerving. And it, yeah, on your first. And then he never mentioned, like, if he would have mentioned that he was going to be concealed carrying because of his job prior to, would you have still gone out and then been more prepared? Or would that have been not. a no? Probably not. <laughs> she yeah. said, that's a no for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. Okay. All right. Wow, Miss Barry, that was an interesting story. I, I could imagine your apprehension on a date with someone who says, I'm carrying a firearm. Um, mm -hmm. Were there any particular aspects of the online dating experience that you wanted to highlight or challenge through the characters in your book? Well, yes, I wanted to highlight that, sure, if you meet somebody out in, in the streets or if you meet somebody any, anywhere, that's great. It's yes. something we all want. Yes, you know, exactly. We do that organic thing. Yeah. But it's not something that's happening every day, no. especially nowadays, you know. Right. And it becomes even more difficult as we get older. Correct. You know, and sometimes we're so busy working on our jobs and stuff like that, that it becomes very hard to meet people and whatnot. And we're not going to college anymore where there's a lot of <laughs> other young people around or more people to meet. Correct. And whatnot. So I wanted I wanted to make sure that you know single women understand that the window of window of opportunity closes. Mm -hmm. It may close sometimes. Mm -hmm. So you gotta you know be jump prepared on while for you that. Can. Yeah, yeah. Because that's that's like when when um, Tony first said she wasn't for online dating because Audrey was online dating. Didn't Audrey meet somebody like right away? Well, she had been doing it quite a while. She but they just told. didn't know, right? Yeah, she okay. Didn't tell her friends. And um, until. Tony's attitude in the office was like, no way, like that was beneath her. Mm -hmm. And then she flips and turns and says, well, Audrey's having a good time. 
maybe I could meet somebody too. And that's when she tried it, right? And she and who was the guy? I can't remember his name right now. Who worked in the office? He really liked her, but she would never. Was he the security? Yeah, guy? he was the head of security. Head of security. I thought he was a. I thought he was Scott. perfect. Yeah, I would have talked Scott. to him. <laughs> she yeah. wasn't giving him a second. She was like, "Okay, tell him to wait downstairs." Yeah, I was yeah. like, mm, "Okay." So, how did you go about developing the? Uh, oh, excuse me, go about creating and developing the characters in your story. Okay, so most of my stories, I say, ninety-nine percent of my stories are based on hearing uh, other people's stories, like sister friendships, family relationships, and so on and so forth. So these three women were actual friends in okay. college. Okay. And they told me their stories and stuff like that. So I decided to write this story based loosely on their lives. Okay, you know, so okay. One was a planner, okay. the leader, mm -hmm. and the other one was more trusting. Oh. And the other one was naive, you know. Okay. So I kind of like put all their um, characters together. Mm -hmm. And that's how I, I built the relationship of the characters on there okay lives. are you are you one of the characters i'm not gonna tell <laughs> <laughs> did y'all see that she wasn't gonna tell me i read the book i'm like which one of the three friends are you <laughs> so miss barry were there any specific traits or characteristics you intentionally gave your characters to make them resonate with readers navigating the world of online dating well, we as a people all share the same humanities. You know, you got feelings of loneliness, we got grief, we got pain, we got joy. Mm -hmm. And so what I wanted to do was implement that in my characters mm -hmm. so that the reader can probably find something in him or herself. You know, once they see a character, they can say, oh, that could be me or that could be me and so on and so forth. So that was very, very intentional mm -hmm. to make my characters multi-dimensional. Okay. I'm trying to think as, as you're talking, I'm thinking who resonated the most with me? And I'm going to say a little bit of Tony because I'm used to being responsible and putting everything else to side on my personal self and my own self Mm -hmm. wishes or needs in my personal life mm -hmm. to get the job done. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, Audrey, mm -hmm. who actually a little bit of all three, Audrey, because I'm committed and loyal like Lorna when I'm mm -hmm. in a relationship. Mm -hmm. I'm 100% like old school. I learned it from my grandmother. You know, you cook, you clean, you wait on your husband, you take good care of him mm -hmm. in, in hopes that he's going to make sure he's taking good care of you. So mm -hmm. I, Lorna, I get that too. And then Audrey, was kind of the free spirit mm. that I definitely have a, a little bit of that and I'm seeing a lot more of it in myself mm. now that my focus and my energy doesn't have to be on raising children and building a career. Mm. It's more of what do I really want to do in life for myself and dating and meeting nice guys is definitely mm. top of the, you know, top of mm. mind. So, so that's really good. So I hope other readers can get that when they start reading soulfully yours. I hope so too. <laughs> <laughs> so as we were talking about before, as a reader, and when we find our favorite authors and like books that they've read, and again, I really, y'all got to read soulfully yours. Um, you, you often wonder, where's the author in all of this? So my next question is, are there elements of your own experiences or that are incorporated into the character stories to add depth and relatability. Are you somewhere in there? Well, let me tell you, if you live long enough, <laughs> everybody has a story to tell. Everybody has a story mm -hmm. to tell. So as an author, and I'm sure I speak for many other authors, you can't help but incorporate a little bit of your life experiences mm -hmm. into your stories. Mm -hmm. you know? Could be a lot, could be a little, whatever. But anyway, you still draw from your own life experiences mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as well as listening to other people. Like mm -hmm. I said, friends and families and whomever. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you could be walking down the street, you hear a conversation between mm. two people and you could say, uh-huh, that dialogue sounds good. Oh, wow. And so put it in the book. Okay. Yeah, wow. Wow. That's, yeah. that's really nice. 
Welcome to the Hair Kitchen. Let G. Marie take care of your hair. Visit us on Style Seat for appointments or call 443-490-5777. And follow us on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. There's something for everyone in the Hair Kitchen. Wow, Miss Barry, that, that mm-hmm. just reminds me of doing hair in the salon. Mm-hmm. I didn't know authors like where you got your inspiration from, but what you just said, when you hear a conversation, you don't mark it verbatim in your book, but you pull the inspiration from that dialogue and go, mm-hmm. I could elaborate on this like this. Mm-hmm. Similar to when we're in the salon and a client says they want a new look and you start showing them pictures and saying, what about this? What about that? And then from those uh, different pictures, mm-hmm. we create a style, my version of what the client, and usually it's a win-win, just like your book, So Fully Yours is a win-win. So, yeah, I didn't know. That's interesting. I didn't know where authors got. And we all very creative, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that definitely is that right brain working yes. full steam ahead. Uh, no analytics mm-hmm. here. Well, y'all have some, but we we strictly on the creative side. So how do the characters in your book navigate the challenges and opportunities unique to online dating and what messages or insights do you hope the readers will take away from their journeys? Well, I wanted the characters in my book to navigate the same way any other person would. They all have, everyone have needs to be met, Mm -hmm. such as trust and openness. And I wanted wanted to make sure that the message that I, I want my readers to leave, to take away with is that on your journey in life, on your journey through life, Mm -hmm. without trust or openness, relationships can become very, very hard. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So just like anything, you get married, you gotta have the trust, you gotta have the openness. Mm -hmm. Same thing with a relationship, you gotta have the trust, you gotta have the openness in order for it to to grow. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. Yeah, because when I think about the transparency, even just in dating, mm. people are just so opaque. They mm. don't really show you. You, you. you have to deal with the representative exactly. at first. Mm. And then mm. sometimes by the time you peel back all the layers mm. that the representative is presenting, mm-hmm. you may not be interested in the person at all. Exactly. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's a part in the book, no, no spoiler here, mm-hmm. but there's a part in the book where... Um, Tony has uh, Tony has to make a decision, mm-hmm. and that part right there, I was holding on. Mm-hmm. I was like, "What is she gonna do?" That's all I'm gonna say about that. But mm-hmm. that part, I think I was calling you and telling you, <laughs> "Oh my gosh, this mm-hmm. book! It should be a movie. It is mm-hmm. so good, so full of yours. It is so on point mm-hmm. with pulling the emotions, having you cliffhanging, waiting." Well, I gotta hurry up and read. Okay, when am I gonna get to it? And then I'm reading when it's time for me to go to bed, so I'm falling asleep. It takes me twice as long to read a book. I don't know about you guys out there, if you can read in bed without falling asleep after three words, but yeah, I couldn't wait for the next time I was gonna read some more lines in Soulfully Yours. It was really good. So in an effort to not spoil the book for you, no spoilers here, cause I'm someone who does not like spoilers. I don't want, don't tell me the story. Mm-hmm. Don't tell me about the movie. Don't do any of that. So I'm not going to ask any of those questions. The only thing I'm going to do is recommend that you go on Amazon and get the book. And without further ado, I'm going to ask an additional question. Um, so Ms. Barry, do you like spoiler alerts? No. <laughs> <laughs> do not tell me anything about it. Nothing. But I have a girlfriend yeah. who could, she mm-hmm. wants to know all of it. I'm like, but you haven't seen it. Mm-hmm. She knows I don't want to hear it. Mm-hmm. So she's going to tell me. I'm like, hold it. I mm-hmm. haven't seen it. I haven't read it. Don't tell me. I said, do you want me to tell you the story? She was like, yes, I don't mind no, if no. you spoil it for me. I was like, okay, that's. Just that's give it. me a synopsis of the story, what it's about, <laughs> and that's it. Let right. me find out everything. Yeah, it's really good, is all I need. And then I go on my own way to find it. But exactly. um, <laughs> did you find any unexpected inspirations or insights about human connections and relationships while exploring the online dating theme in your book? Well, I found out that. When it comes to relationships, we all basically want the same thing. Companionship, affection, security, appreciation, to be heard, Mm -hmm. to be loved, Mm -hmm. to be valued. So that was one 
big insight that I found out, you know, while researching this book, and like I said, interviewing my other friends and family members and so on and so forth, it all boils down to the same thing. Wow. You're all in the same boat. So everybody <laughs> wants that. Nobody yeah. wants to not be cared about, exactly. <laughs> to be abused in any exactly. kind of way. We exactly. all are looking for that human connection. Exactly. AKA love. Yes. So Miss Barry, we've we've talked about Soulfully Yours just enough that I hope you all want to get a copy of the book and read it. And I hope that they enjoy it as much as I did. But Red September, you talked about how you got the title and that your mom's favorite color, the month that she passed. Sorry for your loss. Thank you. Um, how did talk a little bit to to me about the research that you did. I want you to share that so that people can see just how deep the water hole goes. Okay, I'm glad you asked because this book is very, very personal to me. It's about a story about my mother. After I got divorced from my husband, I moved in with my mother and it was then that we really bonded because I came from a family of six, you know, I'm on the last the bottom of the line. <laughs> so she used to tell me stories about her life growing up on this island in the West Indies. She's from the West Indies. Okay. And on this island, there was no running water, no electricity, wow. only the dirt road on which she traveled. So I used to listen to her. I said, Mom, you need to write a book. So fast forward, while I was going to college to get my degree in uh, social work, I took this elective course, it was called Creative Writing. Mm. And I said to myself, I am gonna write this book for my creative writing class based on the story my mother was telling me about her life. And so hence, Red September was born. Oh. And like I said before, I you know, told the story about her and my father. Uh, it, it took 30 years, it's a relationship that took 30 years. I'm not gonna give you a spoiler alert of why it took 30 right. years. <laughs> But it was a 30-year relationship of ups and downs, trials and tribulations, and so on and so forth. And to this day, it's a very, very personal book to me. Very nice. Oh, my gosh. I can't wait. You guys got to get the book. You can buy this book on Amazon, right? As well, yes. And you can follow her. I just followed her myself on Amazon. So that way, Amazon will let me know when you publish a new book, like the one that's coming out that isn't out yet. Yes, I have another So one. there's another book coming out. And what was the name of that book? This is gonna be called When Love Calls. Wow. Hopefully by the summer of this year, I'll have that one out. Okay, yeah. but if not, I'll just bite at the bit waiting <laughs> on it because I think her books are so mm. good. The story just has you sitting on the edge of your seat, like it said, wanting more, going, what's going to happen next? Like, oh my goodness. But mm -hmm. in a good way, not like, oh my goodness, in a, mm -hmm. oh, it's so sad, but hopeful. And you just are championing, championing for mm -hmm. the, the character in the book to win. So yeah. that's, yes. that's another thing. I like to write my uh, characters on flawed characters, but champions at the yes. end you know they they, they got a hero they, in them yes there's a they, hero in the story yeah, yeah, yeah. we're gonna we're gonna it's, get there to the yeah. to the finish line that's right <laughs> again miss barry i immensely enjoyed soulfully yours and i can't Thank wait you. to read red september not just a love story but a life story about your mom and your dad and i would assume your family's in here mm -hmm. so some twists and turns that will keep me again on the edge mm -hmm. of my seat mm -hmm. you you do that very well too um so tell the viewers miss barry um where they can find you well i can be found on my website which is www.maritaberryauthor.com or amazon.com or iUniverse.com or BarnesandNobles.com. Okay. <laughs> Basically, yeah. And I, I want to thank you for hosting me again. Yes. Um, Marie. It's it been was a pleasure. such a pleasure. Like, I hope you all enjoyed the show because I know I enjoyed having you. I've learned so much more um, that, again, has me ready. I'm glad I have a signed copy, mm -hmm. two signed copies mm -hmm. <laughs> of, of the book. And, um, Maybe we'll get back together again and share with the readers Red September. This has been another episode of The Hair Kitchen. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. It's the Hair Kitchen, baby, and you know what it means. G Marie gonna come around. She gonna really lay it down. She gonna tell y'all all about all the things she knows about beauty in this industry. 
everything you need to see. Hair color and history, business opportunity. So you better listen up real good. The hair kitchen is in your hood. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, let's start the show.